The eyes say it all. Justine Enna Ardip, but she has the heart as big as Belgium and soul of a champion. Her fitness, determination, desire have earned her three Grand Slams. But her sights for now are set on a place in the final of this Tier 1 Tour Championship. There's the feisty one. She's a pretty emotional one as well, actually. She is from Russia, and she is now in the top five players in the world. And frankly, the way she plays, quite possibly the sky is the limit. Making their way here to center court Pacific Life semi-final. One more step to the championship match. Lindsay Davenport waiting for the winner. Warm welcome everybody to the desert of California, Indian Wells, Indian Wells Tennis Garden hosting this 2004 Pacific Life Open. Our second semi-final of the day, Justine Enna Arden, Anastasia Miskina. And a friendly hello to you everybody, Cliff Drysdale alongside Pam Shriver. Um, nice opportunity obviously here quickly for, um, for Miskina. Well, it's a good opportunity for everybody, really, still, because the women's field a little depleted with injuries. We saw earlier today Lindsay Davenport take full advantage of a little bit of a weak semifinal opponent, somebody ranked outside the top 20 in the world, in Natalie Deshi of France. Davenport got off to an incredible start. In 17 minutes, she was up five love. Looked like she was just going to wipe Deshi off the court. Guess what? It got very complicated for Lindsay Davenport. 6-2, she won the first set. And Deshi had three set points in the second set before Davenport was able to win it. 7-6, 7-4 in the tie break. She really had to work hard for the first time in the tournament. So now to Justine Anna Arde, who frankly, Pam, as far as I'm concerned, she has to do it the old-fashioned way. She's had great results, I understand that. Three slams, but she doesn't win easily. No, she doesn't. And she's learned also to win when she's not playing her best tennis. Again, this week she's had a pretty routine time, but when you win three majors in the last four play, you go out with a great deal of confidence. So when she plays matches earlier in a tournament like the Pacific Life Open, she really believes she's going to be the victor. In fact, this is her 18th consecutive semifinal appearance, and she got here by defeating Kuznetsova yesterday. Kuznetsova of Russia is one of those many talented Russian players. And again, just like Davenport today, Anna Ardan got off to a quick start for Love. Looked like it was going to be routine, but again, in the second set, Kuznetsova gave Anna Arden everything she could. It ended up being a straight set win, 6-4, 7-5 for Anna Arden. But boy, oh boy, you can see there with her reaction that she was pleased to get through against someone that she had lost to in her previous meeting. To be honest with you, I really like watching Anastasia Miskina play. She's an interesting vital, lively personality, and she is not afraid to share that. Having said that about her personality, her game also can be electrifying. Well, she's really burst on the scene the last couple of years. She won four titles last year, and she's starting to play quarterfinal matches like yesterday against Conchita Martinez like she expects to win, although this quarterfinal played late in the afternoon into the early evening, got very complicated, playing the veteran from Spain, this is one of the great points of the tournament on either the men's side or the women's side. Conchita Martinez down the near end of the court plays a lot of loopy shots. This one looked like a winner, but Mesquina's very quick. And again, pushing Mesquina out wide. The two-handed backhand of Mesquina is such a dangerous shot. Just watch here what she does at the end of an incredibly long rally. She just lines up this one down the line and powers it past Martinez to get through to the semifinals. And she's playing against someone tonight, Justine and Arden, that she's beaten a couple of times before. And the last time they played, we actually saw it in Los Angeles at the Staples Center at the year-end championships. It was 7-5 in the third. Mesquina should have won it, but she lost. These are two shot makers, two speedy players. When we come back, you will see the second semi-final in Arden, Miskina. ESPN 
2's presentation of the ATP Masters Series, the first of the year, called the Pacific Life, is brought to you by Pacific Life, offering insurance, annuities, and investments. Mercedes-Benz, located on the web at mbusa.com. And Hertz. At Hertz, we have exactly what you need. And this Indian Wells tennis garden has exactly what these two players need also. Beautiful weather, 80 degrees. Slight breeze, clear and warm. Doesn't get much better than that. Justine and our Dan, I remember first seeing her play back in 1999, five short years ago, and boy, what has she accomplished since then? She's only lost one match in 2004. That was to Kuznetsova in the semis of Doha. Miskina went on to win that tournament, actually defending her title in Doha. Again, she is a sure thing right now in our Dan to get through to the semifinals. Here's her path. It really didn't get complicated until Kuznetsova, although in the round of 16, she trailed 1-4 in that second set before getting through in straight sets. Yeah, I thought that was a, a tougher match. It certainly was than the way that it started out. The skin is 22. Turned pro in 98. She's very quick about the court. She's only lost three times this year. She's got wonderful ground, ground strokes, terrific mobility. And a couple of three setters thrown in there, third round, and lost that middle set to Martinez. in that last meeting look at those set scores so tight in los angeles during the round robin part of the championships and before that mesquina had beaten oh. anna arden in the european indoor part of the fall so she's had a recent victory N. R. Den is not playing Miami. Is she ducking the Williams sisters there? Or is no. she genuinely thinking about trying to win the well, French? I, I is think, a little early? Yeah, well, she's a warrior, and I just think she feels that uh, she can't be at her best at all. These tier ones on the women's side come one after the other because after Miami, just a one week off from Family Circle, which is the first of the big clay court events, and that's the one where N. R. Den won last year over Serena Williams, which really launched her towards her first major title, the French Open. So she wants to be 100% for that defense of that title. 15. Will she stay in the USA or will she head yeah. back to you? No, I'm pretty sure she'll stay in the U.S. She's got a pretty good training base in the Tampa area. That's where she works with her fitness trainer, Pat Echeberry, who's here with her this week. Well, two double faults in this game, two break points for Mesquina. Exact opposite start from her quarterfinal match against Kuznetsova. And Arden didn't miss a ball through the first four games. might have happened with N. R. Den's schedules, the WTA tour may have gone to her and say, you know what, if you're just going to play one of those two, we really need you at the Pacific Life Open where, because of injuries and so on and so forth, it's a little bit of a softer field, whereas Miami can really exist without the number one player, given the fact both the Williams sisters are in the draw. Capriati looks like she's going to play. All sorts of wheeling and dealing going on behind the scenes sometimes with the top player's schedule. Thanks. 
Skinner gets a break. First game, one game to love against the world's top player, uh, who leads the women's tour. And here she is on the sub subject of the status now of the women's game. You see new faces on the tour, you know, all the, the young Russians, and then uh, a lot of great players, great champions who can uh, win Grand Slams for sure. And it's uh, very hard right now. It's a high level. You have to compete in every match uh, to stay at the top of the game. So uh, uh, it's every day you have to start again. And that's, that's not easy every day. Two of her three majors were won without the Williams sisters in the field, or at least the U.S. Open last year. Serena was not in the Australian Open this year, but the first one, the French, everybody was in it. I don't think it's fair, really, for people to say, oh, you know, NR Den's only been able to do this because of the injuries. She was showing great signs even before the Williams sisters struggled with injuries. You can see what a difference the rankings look now versus the end of 2002. It's a big difference, isn't it, Cliff? Yeah, look at that. I mean, it is it's fascinating to see how quickly things changed. Number one to number seven for Serena, and then two to 17 for Vin Capriati's way down as well. In our den now one, yeah. Maresmo from six to three. You saw Hingis just hanging on to the number 10 ranking the end of 02, but she was basically retired by then. Faded off the scene and end of 02. Love 40. Break is served down in Arden with three break points to come back. I actually think the start of this um, vulnerable time for women's tennis began when Hingis retired. That was a huge void. They'd lose that phenom that had been number one in the world for so many years at such a young age. Had won five majors before her 20th birthday. That was it, though. Game in Arden. One game in our den breaks and it's even. How can you say that, Pam, when, when it seems to have been so much Williams driven? Well, I, I think that even the Williams and Capriati and, and Davenport, I mean, they needed that foil. Like, NR Den's kind of been a little bit that way of, of a smaller player, not the big hitter. And I just feel like Hingis, even though she was short and, and not powerful, she was a giant on the court in many ways. 15. Her creativity, the way she competed against the big players and tried to hold them off, and then eventually it just became a little too much. Once Kleister started to beat her, then Hantukova beat her in the finals here two mm -hmm. years ago. Those were the losses that really started to do Hingis in. Tennis misses her for sure. Anytime you lose one of your young champions when they're still young, it's, it's really a shame. Let me first Skina hits the ball very hard and flat, so you're going to see a pretty small margin of error for her shots. Standing well back to receive the serve of Anna Arden. She even stays beyond the baseline on this second serve. It's the first serious glare over to Jens Gerlach, her coach. Somebody who can really get some verbal abuse in the course of a match at times from his charge. Anna Arden. Oh, so it's two games to one. I'm looking for whether you get some abuse as you speak, and maybe it's happening. 2-1. Set. 
talk about good matches, Pammy, this afternoon. Tim Henman took on Andy Roddick, two of the game's giants in the men's division, and it was, and it lived up to its billing action in every way. Well, you had a feeling going in that it was going to be one of these matches because Henman's beaten Roddick a couple of times during this great run of Roddick. We know Henman loves to spend his whole time there, up at net, and that is a tough thing for, to think about as Brad Gilbert mentions it to Andy Roddick. I tell you, I talked to my mom and my grandma. They were just glued to the set on the edge of their seats in San Diego watching this match as a lot of other people were. Look at Henman. He's, he can win a major this year. What do you think, Wimbledon? I think uh, Henman can win Wimbledon. He's been in the semifinals four times and nothing would give me greater pleasure than to see him. He's a terrific guy. Federer and Agassi will Ladies take uh, place, place against each other in the semifinals tomorrow at 3 o'clock Eastern Time, live here from the Pacific Life Open. Labatsi with his win over Blake will take on, that just happened, he's going to take on Tim Hem. It's a tough schedule this time on the men's side. That The half of the draw that played today, no day off. That is a very tough match to play. It was still pretty warm this afternoon. Will Henman recover enough? He certainly has the best half of the draw away from Agassi and Federer. Yeah, we've got this uh, crotchety director by the name of Bob Rosberg, where his dad, of course, was PGA champion, and mm -hmm. he added his enthusiasm for this afternoon's match along with your family. He said it was, it was uh, scintillating stuff. Uh, speaking of scintillating stuff, that's the first rally that's gotten everybody's attention in this stadium. Good all-court play from Anna Arden. You can see the speed of Mesquina as she hits the forehand there, covers across, and is able to flip a cross-court winner that, against a lot of people, might have been a winner. Mesquina not known for much of a serve, and she actually's nursing a little bit of a shoulder ailment. There's not much in it, or is there, Pam, in the mobility between these two? They're both oh. quick. Yeah, they're both very quick. I think NR Den might be a better mover front to back as well as side to side, whereas Mesquina might be more comfortable just side to side. interesting within a couple of points to see Anna Arden hit the bounce okay, overhead okay. and handle it very easily. Mesquina, the bounce overhead, not as confident. She missed it. So are important shots to practice. Those specialty shots, the drop shot, bounce overhead, high defensive lob, little chip finesse shots. Break point. After a slow start, and Arden in the last three games, she's up 3-1 in a break, first set. And Saturday, the NHL on ABC features exciting regional action as teams battle for playoff position. You'll either see the Blues versus the Stars or the Rangers against the Flyers. Check your local listings for the game in your area. The NHL on ABC Saturday at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific. Every game counts for double almost from here on out as they head for the playoffs.
Patty did that promo this afternoon and I told him that you were asking about his Rangers and he was not happy. Well, I don't blame him. They're 25 and 35, 10 games under 500. They're not going to the playoffs. <laughs> he takes it so hard. Oh, well. Love 15. That's another Not double. Five, That's nine. number three. Served two in her opening service game. She's serving at 38%. And you know what? That's eight percentage points higher than Mesquina's serving. Just horrendous first serve percentage so far for both. Flips the line. No argument from Mesquina. 15-30. Aggressive auto insurance shot spot is going to show you that that was not even on the line. It's inside the line. See that different look that that slice backhand gives Anna Arden. You know, she hits over it, hits over it. The ball bounces up higher, a little more pace. And then all of a sudden, she can just take it off, stays low, puts Mesquina off a bit, makes the unforced error. I mean, there's a lot of interesting things that Anna Arden can do with that backhand side. And you, Cliff, love talking about it, don't you? The slice? The, everything on that backhand side. Even yeah. the, the big one where she... Puts that left hand I, I, out. I love the variety. I really do. I love it. I think it's what makes her number one or helps. Mm. Oh. She gets a little ticked off when everybody talks about her backhand being her only shot because uh, she claims that her forehand is as good and better. And you know, I think when you check the statistics, that is probably true. It's just that it is such a it's a beautiful motion. Yeah, and we're so used to seeing the two-handed backhands, particularly in the women's game. So we like to see that big one-hander, but she's right. At the Australian Open, the total's going into the final, and including the final, many more winners off the forehand side. Almost double. Game point. Game. Game. Little scratchy start to this match, if the truth be told. First uh, serve break. Is in our den, and then four in a row for the Belgian world's number one. <laughs> Quarterfinals: Irakli Labatsi taking on Tim Henman, and uh, tell you, excuse me, I beg your pardon. Let's see who he will take on. He took on James Blake. And Patrick McEnroe watched that to some dismay. Well, it's just a huge upset to see Labazzi, the lefty from Georgia, able to use his big forehand that can also come up with some finesse. His, his big first serve is what got him out of a tight match the other day. And disappointment for J James Blake because you expect more from him in a, the third set, especially after winning the first set, 7-6, seven, 7-1 seven, in the tiebreak, only win five more games. But this man from Georgia, he's ecstatic. This is the biggest tournament of his life, and he just played in a big smacker on our camera lens. So it's Federer Agassi, and then it's Hinman Labazzi for a place in the championship match. Those two matches coming your way tomorrow at 3 o'clock Eastern time, starting with Federer Agassi. And there is great anticipation here in the Coachella Valley for that one. There is Carlos Rodriguez, coach of Enna Arden for about the last eight years. He got caught yesterday, though. More on that in a minute. Late in the second set against Kuznetsova, the sideline judge ran up to the chair umpire. Had quite a few sentences to say. And then Lynn Welsh, chair umpire, gave Enna Arden a warning for coaching. In the press conference, Enna Arden said, well, he just told me to be aggressive and come to net. But that's coaching, right. and as of right now, the way the rules stand, that is not allowed. She was very honest about exactly what Carlos told her. 
30 left. Four straight games for in our den after the first game. Well, somehow Mesquina's found a way to get the 40 love on her serve, but her numbers are just awful. I mean, still early in the match, but 31% first serve percentage. She's only won one first serve points of her first serve points and only four out of nine on the second serve. Check her winners and unforced errors. One winner, eight unforced. Ugh, double fault. 40, 50. She's going to start yelling at her coach. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, how do you explain it, Pam, because um, the weather is perfect. It's not like there's wind or sun. Well, and look what we saw Davenport today do in the sun in a bit of a breeze. Davenport served in the mid-70s throughout the entire match. Another one of those bounce overheads missed. How do you describe her personality, Mosquito's personality, off the court? Man? Well, her coach, Jens Gerlach, would probably say off the court, she's just smooth and nice and calm most of the time, but when she gets on the court at times, it's tornado, hurricane, all wrapped into one. She is really suffering. That's her third double fault and a break point here. She has not yet held serve. And that's, that was some sympathy applause from the crowd, just trying to boost her confidence a bit. Should have held serve. 40 love up. And Arden breaks again, five games to one for set. You know, in all three of the women's matches, all three that we've done, there's been a big lead at the start of the match. And each time, previous two times, it's gotten very, very tight. I don't know whether Mesquina has it in her. She had that long three-setter against Conchita Martinez yesterday over two hours. Steers that one a little lob, but it was too long. Relatively easy shot. She could have banged that I love it. more easily. Coming into this semifinal, Mesquina has been on the court about an hour and a half more. Played 17 more games. Lost 13 more. That's the end of my testing of my addition and subtraction. <laughs> Oh. Remember the last time they played it was seven five five seven seven six. in Los Angeles in early November. As I remember it, was that not after NRD had qualified as number one in the world? Anyway, Pam, or was that before? Because Gosh. I had the sense that in NRD she, was, she wasn't fully committed to that year-ending event. Didn't play that well. She was nursing a cold. Daddy all. 
great to see the all-court variety of the Belgian. Here with a big forehand, knows that she has Mesquina on the defensive, slides in. Just plays that safe little slide across forehand volley. It was an effort to go back with a big angle, but a uh, pretty lame looking attempt, and this is a set point. Skeena currently five in the world, but right now playing about like the number 105. She can change that around in a hurry. She has a lot of streaky scores. If you look at her whole tally for all of 03, you'll see a lot of 6-1, six 6-love six sets that she wins and loses. See whether NR Den will afford her that courtesy in match number two. That was pretty easy after the first game. NR Den wins it 6 1. Pretty disconsolate. Uh, Anastasia Mesquina, she got the break of serve in the first game and then just in an hour, then won six in a row. Well, a big problem for Mesquina has been her serve, both first and second. Here's a comparison of their speeds on their second serve, second averaging six. 90 mile Mesquina an hour in the red is Anna Arden, and I can almost run faster five <laughs> months pregnant than Mesquina's second serve once it crosses the net. It's only going about 25 mile an hour. Starts at about 69. There's a weak one there. mentioned that she has a shoulder ailment and that's certainly not helping her she doesn't rely on her serve very much but you can see there she needs more than 33 percent first serves in and our den's only 10 percent better but winners to unforced errors at least and our den has some winners let's face it it was an awful first set i mean i don't I, I really can't can't dress that one up and i try to dress things up sometimes <laughs> Love 30. Just unleashing that back and uh, Anastasia Mesquina, uh, yeah, this could be her seventh game in a row that she goes down. I mean, that is pretty one-sided. And Mesquina's playing a lot of tennis, singles and doubles. Mentioned that she won in Doha a couple of weeks ago, defending her title, played doubles there, played the indoor circuit in Europe, of course, played Australia. Has to play doubles again later tonight as well. Cliff, when I see a player ranked five in the world who's been playing pretty well put in a first set like this, I, I just feel like they're looking a little fatigued. Time to take a day or so off. Betty on. And the fatigue isn't always physical. No, I was just thinking that. Yeah. And they're pretty connected. But you can be pretty lively physically, but mentally wiped out, and vice versa. Chance here for another break of serve here by Justine Anna Arden. First game of the second set. Game. Break a serve to start off the second set. Seven straight games for Anna Arden. ESPN and ESPN2 have coverage of the LPGA Safeway International presented by Coca-Cola. It's this weekend. Annika Sornstam. Fancy that. 
She's the leader after two rounds and defending champ Suri Pak of Korea. She's just three shots back. Michelle Wee's been in the field. ESPN2 has coverage Saturday at 4.30 Eastern. And ESPN has final round coverage Sunday at 5 Eastern. The LPGA players are getting ready to invade the desert after the Pacific Life Open. Just up the road, Mission Hills Country Club for their first major of the year comes almost as quickly as in their calendar as tennis's first major, the Australian Open. Say that again, Pam. Well, the LPGA, they don't start their year until March. So this is, I think, their second or second event of the year. Mm -hmm. And so the major is like their third week of the year. Jens Gerlach looking on. So I was comparing that, how okay. early in the season they play their first major to tennis. Thirty love. Thirty love. And then having things all her way. Not much resistance, unfortunately, from the Russian. Thirty love, one game to love, first set six one. When you're the second semifinal to play, and your opponent's already out there. Even though a day off tomorrow, you like to get done quickly, neatly, straight sets. Mention the string of semifinal appearances in a row. This is the 18th consecutive tournament. It was a year next week, the last time Anna Arden lost before the semifinals. That was at the NASDAQ to Chanda Rubin. And she's just two away from Martina Hingis's number from 96 97 years when. Uh, 20 consecutive semifinal berths were earned by Hingis, but that's now, what, six, seven years ago. So just a great string of consistent play from the number one player. Still game point. Skeena's the one that's kind of ready to re receive, and N. Arden's taken her time, even though N. Arden's the one in the commanding position, seven games in a row. She's such a little pro, very professional about everything she does. Grown in maturity on and off the court the last couple of years. of light at the end of the tunnel here for Meskina. If she doesn't make a move soon, this could be over in a hurry. We saw an earlier semifinal, both players with positive differential. Not this match. It's a nice force to play there, though. Skeena played the 2000 Olympics for Russia and I'm sure will be the Olympics this year, top five player in the world. Tell you what, she'll want to hold her position though because there's a lot breathing down her neck. Game. A lot of young Russian players, <laughs> a lot. Are there ever. Two love now in the second set. Here is the list and it is, I think it's 10 strong in the top 40 in the world, starting with Moschina at five. You've got Kuznetsova, who battled N. Arden yesterday, and Sharapova at 14 and 24. Safina is Marat Safin's sister. She's now up there in the 30s. 15. Kind of like uh, the look of Kuznetsova and Sharapova. Mm -hmm. Just two years apart, one's 16, one's 18. That's 
that change of direction attempt from Anna Arden. The ball was coming pretty hard cross court from Mesquina's forehand to Anna Arden's forehand, and she tried to go down the line. Those kind of change of direction shots are never easy. This one-on-one -on -one game of tennis is so mental between the two as well. And it's, it's yeah, Meskin is not playing great. On the other hand, she's taken on the world's number one, Anna Arden, not making enough unforced errors for her. Fooled on that one. Anna Arden could have done a little bit more with a forehand volley, but Meskina picked the cross court. Watch here. Forehand volley just kind of hit it back casually. Meskina was right there and could go either way and could have hit the lob as well. And Arden was right over the net. Two game points. Danger of getting on the board here since that first game of the first set when she broke. Net in second set. Good play, and Ardena used that play yesterday early on against Kuznetsova. Coming in behind some weak serves, shots early in the rally. Miskina is on the board in the second, and Arden leading with a break 2 1, and Arden winning the first set. Semi final. Games to one, Justin and Arden with a break of serve, winning the first 6 1. Where have all <laughs> yeah, the da -da -da. top 10 yeah. gone? <laughs> da -da -da. Well, we're going to show you as soon as Cliff stops <laughs> humming. You can see uh, and Arden is in the semis where she usually is. Kleister's hurt her wrist here. Moresmo and Capriati out with a bad back. Davenport's in the finals. Mosquina's in the semis. So you got three of the top five that are doing all right. Serena's supposed to come back next week. Venus is in the draw. Capriati, I think, is in the draw. But boy, oh boy, I have never seen such a mash unit of a WTA tour in a long, long time, if ever. I've heard some WTA officials say, oh, it's the same amount of injuries on the tour as other years. Well, that might be the case, but certainly there's more injuries to the top players. And let's, let's face it, that's where you notice it the most. If someone's ranked 55 in the world and injured, you don't even know it. Is there a complacency danger in a match like this with Anna Arden running away with it? You know, against, for some players maybe, but I think Anna Arden has a lot of respect for Mesquina. She's lost to her a couple of times, had close matches, so I, I think she'll just be like a horse going to the barn looking to get to the finish line in this match. So I don't think she will be complacent. better from a little more authoritatively in the baseline. There comes a time in a match when you and your coach know that you know, you're so far down that there's only one way that you can go to get a little better.
they should just throw in the towel and go away. Game point in Arden. I know Moschino won the point anyway, but I'm just wondering if she realizes how close to the net NR Den finishes these rallies. Suggesting a few lobs might find well, out. Yeah, that was kind of my thought. Game point, Justine. Arden 3-1 now in the second set and one of the reasons why it's total domination by Justine Anna Arden is that Mesquina is really struggling on serve and these are the black serves are the serves to the ad side yellow to the deuce but look at all the ones up at net if a tennis ball had velcro <laughs> that's where they would stick you can see there's about five or six that are like half to three quarters of the way up the net. So she's really not reaching or extending, which was the exact problem on that second serve. Her left arm drops down. Her head starts to pull down. There's nothing in her body, not even her racket, that's going up and through the ball. Everything's dragging it down. Love 30 in this game, and if Miskina's going to make a move, it's going to have to be ASAP. <laughs> S-O-O-N. And, and she's, uh, I think she's even so tired she's not giving her coach any lip tonight. I mean, it's kind of an all-round disappointing show from Miskina because usually if she loses like this, there's a little bit of... A, Fight? Yeah, a little yeah. sideshow or a little... Oh, okay. Some emotions, some firework. 15, 30. She's subdued. I think she's thinking also, I've got to go play doubles after this. Break point. And that miss gives Justin and Arden her insurance break for one. Because number one will serve when we come back. Indian Wells Tennis Garden hosting this extravaganza of tennis on the west coast of the USA from the Palm Springs area. 4 1 in Arden in the semi final. Against yeah. Anastasia Mosquina. She won the first set going away 6 1. Not much of a match, frankly. And uh, in Arden looking for a meeting with Lindsay Davenport in the final on Sunday. mention Roger Federer and Andre Agassi at 3 o'clock Eastern time tomorrow afternoon live from this center court. Jacqueline Jekyll, Jekyll Hyde first two points, ace and double fault. To be followed, excuse me, Pam, Tim Henman and Irakli Labatsi. You need to keep practicing that name. You're not, it's just not a familiar face in the final four of a tennis masters series. Outstanding point, I'm happy to announce. And Mesquina feeling good about it. 
shots, really. She's only been able to come up with a couple of her typical day, shots. Day. I mean, Mosquito, when she's playing at her best, she just rolls these angles and clears the ball by fractions over the net. She's very precise when she's on her game. She's not been able to show off her best stuff tonight. I think it's fatigue playing the number one player in the world. She's number five, so she's certainly done a lot of good work the last 12 months. Trying for the knockout punch on the two-hander, but nothing's going her way. Nothing, and it's Thedior. I actually give Mesquina credit for keeping her composure because certainly I had quite a temper. And if I was getting clobbered on the court like this in a semifinal, it'd be hard not to get upset. But she seems to realize that uh, she's just not fresh enough. Legs are probably a bit sore from yesterday's over two hour match. That's a good one. And a break point for Mesquina. Two-hand backhand when it's on is really one of the best out there. And they're just a simple little punch volley. She's not a natural volleyer, but she does the simple out in front, just a little swing. Cheers. Cheers. Anastasia Miskina had a good Australian three-set win over Sharapova in the third round and Chanda Rubin. And then a good match with Kleisters. Remember that very close second set lost in the tiebreak. Advantage. Oh. And Miskina absolutely clobbered Sharapova here. Remember Sharapova, one of those promising young Russians, just 16 years of age. A lot of people feel Sharapova is the best of the teenagers out on the tour right now. Game, okay, night in. in a little trouble in that game, but holds on and she's got five to one. Yeah, I think you could have asked N.R. Den before the match. Tell me what score you think you're going to win tonight. And it would have been a long time before she said anything close to 6-1, 6-1. That is if she breaks here. in this match. Can Mosquina get away with this serve and stay in the top five in women's tennis? You know, it kind of shows you how outstanding her ground strokes are and how her movement and other parts of her game because her serve. And Dementieva, another Russian that's been in and around the top ten, has an awful serve. This, this I think, is the worst of anyone in the top 20. 30-15. But you can hide it in women's tennis a little bit more. It, it, the serve is not as vital as it is, I think, in the men's game. And a corner cover didn't have the best serve no. either. No. Boy, she struggled. And she got to the top 10 a number of different times. Semi-final Wimbledon. Oh! Oh. I mentioned this shoulder problem. And she's got a little bit of a sh tiny shoulder tear is what I read. And uh, it certainly doesn't help.
She has crept above 40% first serves in, though, for the match. 41. Oh, 30-40. Match point for Anna Arden. <laughs> People are applauding. I think they're applauding because it's almost over. What are they <laughs> trying to give her encouragement? I'm not sure what's in that applause. Match first serve. Cheers. Staying alive for just a few more points as Skinner gets that one in. Advantage Miskina. And now gain point. You watch Miskina is going to hold <laughs> on here. Come storming back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think going to serve a double fall first point next game. And okay. Going to give her some hope. All right. Is that your psychic reading? right every time. Did you call one of those 900 numbers in the last <laughs> change of ends? Jesus. She can hurt you from anywhere in the court. Deuce. Advantage on speed. Yes. Tell you, she's been in that NR Den 22 times in this match. It's kind of the area that we haven't talked about a whole lot, winning 17 of those 22 times. 15 in this set alone, winning 12. That's outstanding. Advantage in Psychic prediction in trouble, match point <laughs> for in our den. Game said, match ready now, game. Two sets still on. 6-1, 6-1. Well, uh, very poor effort there from Mesquina. It was not a well-played match, obviously. Trying to find uh, reasons for it, Pam. And I guess as she, uh, as Enardo goes out and thanks the crowd. Um, what kind of, you know, the explanations that you made are the best that I can think of, which is just she's tired mentally yeah. and physically. I mean, that was definitely just a tired effort. And we've got two players, though, from the moment Kleister's pulled out with the wrist problem, you just figured it was probably going to be a Davenport and an Arden final. They have played, I think, it's seven times with Davenport winning five of the seven. That's correct, but the last time was just, uh, what, about a month and a half, two months ago, NR Den beat Davenport at the Australian Open, and of course it was 9-7 in the third, two years ago at the Australian Open for NR Den. And NR Den's won the last three. We'll talk to her after this break. A one-sided victory in our Pacific Life match summary will show Justine N. Arden, the number one player in the world, doing damage from all parts of the court. The return of serve against a pretty weak Mesquina service throughout. N. Arden hitting the sideline there on her forehand. Good second serve out wide, and the backhand just goes to work. Forehand puts away the point. The great thing about Justin N. Arden is she can hurt you from all parts of the court. Forehand, backhand, volleys, and there she is courtside and just seen it a lot easier than what you would have expected tonight against Mesquina. Oh, I didn't expect this kind of match for sure. I was feeling she was nervous a little bit. I played a really consistent match, really solid, and uh, that's not easy because you need to stay focused on every point, and she, she did a lot of mistakes. It helped me a lot, but uh, I've been concentrated the whole match. That's good. 
That's very good. Now in the final, you are going to come up against Lindsay Davenport again. Some thoughts on that one, Justine? Uh, it's going to be a tough match. I, uh, I watched her match a little bit today. She played uh, really well. She was serving great. And uh, I know I'll have to play a very good match if I want to win this tournament. I'm very happy to be in the final. You know, all my matches with, with uh, Lindsay have been uh, really tough in the past. And I'm sure that it's going to be another good match, I hope. Well, we're going to show a couple of points from the match tonight. You've got the monitor down there. Oh, you're in fast motion even. Look at that. Moving I'm quick. very quick. <laughs> <laughs> you volleyed well tonight. Yeah, I, um, I was really aggressive. I was to the net a lot, and uh, I was feeling comfortable on the court. I had a lot of time to organize my game, so that was pretty good, yeah. And, and that backhand, you, you have such versatility, even on awkward shots like that last one. Yeah, I was quick today, I was moving well, and uh, my backhand was uh, very good for sure. It gave me a, a lot of points. I had a little bit of trouble on my serve, so I'll have to work on it if I want to, to win on Sunday. And tomorrow, a day off, what do, what do you do on the day before a final? Uh, nothing special, I'm just going to play some tennis, hit uh, an hour, maybe tomorrow a little bit less, and just uh, have a good massage, you know, take some rest, uh, relax a little bit to be ready for Sunday. What do you say when people ask you what has made such a huge difference in your game and how you got to number one? What do you say? I just believe in myself, you know, I'm feeling much more confident and I know I can, I can beat the strong players. So it made a, a big difference mentally. I feel it on the court and uh, I changed my mentality also about the hard work. I know that's the key of the success and I just try to keep going. Well done tonight. Thank you very much. Shows in your game. Well done, Justine. Thank you. In the championship match, Justin and Arden over Miskina, easily one and one.